Guys, what is going on? I know you've seen a lot of me recently. I promise this is worth the, your time. If you are any kind of vintage baseball card collector or enthusiast, you must stay to watch and listen to this entire story because it's pretty unbelievable. Uh, before I get started, I want to give a huge thank you to Max Jackson and Michael Shane for their research in what I found uh, over the past 24 hours. Uh, your help has been incredible, and uh, thank you guys so much. Um, I'm going to Joey Brings This, Joey Brings It This, and turn the camera around so you can see what I got. Just give me a sec. Alright guys, welcome back. Uh, I'm going to let you look at this card, and while you look at it, I'm going to tell you a little bit of a story. So... Yesterday was National Baseball Card Day. Yesterday was Saturday, August, I guess it was 11th. And um, I wanted to celebrate. I was working that day, and I didn't really think I would have a chance to get to a hobby shop, uh, at least one close to me before they closed. But I kind of wanted to be spontaneous and go during my lunch break. Um, so I ran up to a shop in New York City. Um, and I went inside the shop. It was very small. First time I've ever been there. And um, I was browsing around, and this shop was a little busy. It was very small, like I said. Uh, I bought my packs of Allen & Ginter after being there for, I don't know, five minutes or so. And I was getting ready to leave, and something caught my eye. It was uh, a card that looked like something that I recognized. Um, as you can see here, this card kind of looks similar to the uh, R303B. Uh, which is the 1939 Gaudi Premium card um, issued by the Gaudi Manufacturing Company. Um, now, those cards measure about, I don't know, six, uh, like around 6 by 8 maybe. Um, they're pretty big cards, and uh, they're printed on really, really thin paper stock, uh, almost like a photograph, not really like a baseball card or any kind of cardboard that uh, we know of. Um, but I recognized this because it was a very similar size and very similar pose to what I had known the R303A to be, which is a little smaller and a lot rarer. And this Greenberg was underneath a stack of cards, and I saw his name poking out, otherwise I probably would have walked right past it. Um, so I stopped the guy who was working, there were two guys working, and, uh, opens up the case and pulls the card out and gives it to his associate. I'm waiting a few minutes while he rings it up and helping other customers all at the same time. I was being patient, but I, I knew this was something that I didn't have. I've never seen this card before. Uh, I was a little unfamiliar because, the t as you can see, the top and bottom were trimmed, so I wasn't sure if this was original, if someone trimmed them themselves, whatever it was. Um, so I kind of had some some concerns, but I knew this was something that I didn't have already and I needed it for my collection. Um, so he comes back and he says, the Greenberg is $40. And I, I then began to freak out on the inside. Um, my, uh, my credit card nearly burned a hole in the guy's chip reader, um, taken out of my pocket so quickly. So I got my stuff, ran out of there, called an Uber, and I had about 20 minutes left in my lunch break. Uh, I called Michael on video chat in the Uber, showing him what I believed was an R303A Greenberg, which I had never seen before. Uh, and I was, I was super jazzed about it. So, so excited. I want to show you the back of this card, too. Um, these cards, you can see there's writing on here, but I, I honestly couldn't care less about it. Um, they're really the backs of these cards are really cool. Um, they uh, teach people how to play baseball, and actually the instructions are quite amazing. And uh, they're pretty detailed, given the fact that they're only a few sentences long. Um, so, got back to the store, and I could not focus at work. I really, really could not focus. And um, I would take like a short break and try to like do some research and figure out what the heck I have. And uh, I showed Max and I showed Michael. Um, oops, sorry. Uh, I showed them, um, you know, what I have, and they were both really excited for me. And um, 
uh, they really, really assisted me, like I mentioned earlier, uh, so much in a lot of the research that came about. Um, and uh, eventually I, I looked on eBay for something similar. I wanted to find if there are any R303As on eBay now that I could learn more about and maybe learn why this was trimmed. And as I was looking, uh, there was a lot of four uh, trimmed, what I thought was trimmed Gaudi premiums, uh, what I came to learn was that uh, this is, well, it's a long story, but I'll, I'll shorten it a little bit for you. In 1939, there was a surplus of these cards. The Worldwide Gum Company, which is a Canadian-based company, bought the surplus of the cards uh, from the Gaudi and uh, factory trimmed them on the top and on the bottom and then reissued them in, in Canada. So this is a Canadian issue, originally U.S. issue, um, but this, because of the trim on the top and bottom, is a Canadian issue. And I've come to learn that this is one of the scarcest 19, uh, 1930s gu uh, gum issues in existence. Um, like I said, I have personally never seen this card before, um, and I really had to do a lot of research to really learn about it. Um, there is a, a good amount of information on this set because uh, not a lot is known, so what is known is published. Um, that may sound like an oxymoron or juxtaposition, but you understand what I mean. Um, there's information there, but it's uh, no one knows how these cards were distributed. Uh, no one knows why they were cut. There's only speculation. Um, the other speculation, the interesting part, is that um, this trimmed premium is a scarcity because it has it was um, issued first in the U.S. and then uh, brought over the border to Canada and sold. And you can see on the back, it says uh, manufactured in Boston, Massachusetts, USA. Um, so I'm sure the Canadian government did not want to have anything to do with these, and uh, probably halted production on them, which is why they are so scarce. Um, so. Long story short, uh, this is what is called a V351B uh, trimmed premium um, from Worldwide Gum, reissued from the 1939 Gaudi R303A. If you can follow all that, congratulations. <laughs> um, now, fast forward. Uh, there was another. There was a stack of cards um, at uh, at the shop and. I made a deal with one of my colleagues that today I would go into work an hour late, pick up the cards, and then in exchange, he leaves an hour early, and I jumped at that opportunity. So I got to the shop this morning. I really played it very cool. I was browsing around a lot. He remembered me from yesterday, and I asked again about the, the premiums, and uh, he brought me out the rest of the ones he had from the display case, and... Uh, I want to show you the different uh, cards that I end up picking up here. This is one of the better ones of the, of the, of the lot. This is a, a Tommy Henrik, um, former Yankee, and a uh, great ball player, too. Uh, this guy's pretty well known in the 30s and 40s when he played. Um, the back here is the same as the Hank had the hat of bat. I think they probably... Um, uh, catered each one of these to the the player and how they played. This is probably the best one of the set that I grabbed. This is Bill Dickey, a Yankee Hall of Fame catcher. I love this pose of him. And you can really see the old equipment there and the old mitt. It's really so cool. Um, and the back is how to catch or how to catch behind the bat. And it shows you, like, put your fingers down for the sign and when they deliver... Make yourself in the right position, in position to throw, flip your mask off. Really, really interesting stuff. Um, you can see this card has some staining. Uh, these cards are really uh, condition sensitive. Um, but you can see it has some staining there. Um, and I'm not sure. I don't think this one has a crease. Um, but there are a couple others that do. Uh, this is probably the one in the, f in the group of five, well, four, because I'm keeping the Greenberg, that are in the best condition. This is a Ken Keltner. Now, I had never known of Ken Keltner 
but I looked him up on uh, on Baseball Reference, and this is he's actually he was actually a pretty a pretty great player. He's a seven time All Star and played nearly all of his career with the uh, with the Indians, and um, he uh, hit I guess for an average around two seventy five for his career, and um, had over fifteen hundred hits. So this guy was pretty solid. He had a couple seasons over hundred RBIs, um, and he played a great second base for the Indians and. Uh, I never heard of him before, so it was really cool to do some research on him and figure out sort of what he is. Uh, the last card um, I kept in the screw down. I uh, ran out of the top loaders. But this is a Ben Chapman, uh, storied racist and uh, ultimate bad guy. Um, as you can see, there's some stain from the back, and it comes through to the front a little bit. Uh, this is how to steal bases. This one is how to slide. I didn't show the Ken Keltner. How to slide and how to steal bases. So, I mean, the fact that these were just sitting in a shop in New York City for as much time as they were, uh, to me is pretty unbelievable. Because um, they, really they had to make their, their way from the US to Canada, back to the US, who knows when and who knows how, and then to a shop in New York City for me to uh, spontaneously go and pay them a visit. Um, when I saw the Greenberg, I want to show you how it was displayed. Um, let's say, like, it was actually the Tommy Henrik that was on top of it, but it was like this. So the Henrik was like that, and then his name showed at the bottom like this, and I recognized it immediately as the, uh, the Gaudi Premium. And let me tell you, man, it really pays to know your shit. Um, I could have easily walked right past this card, and someone could have come in and bought this and bought the rest of these, and that would have been that. Um, and I would still have never found or owned this card. And um, I want to show you another really interesting discovery uh, that Max made. Um, this is the only card that has writing on the back, but I think it's actually pretty significant to what this is. Uh, you can see the first two words are Detroit Tiger. The next two words, I couldn't really decipher, but Max uh, put it into Google Translate. And this word here, in the, the third word from the left, means league. And this means American um, in French. So we are assuming that the person that maybe first owned this card uh, is a French-Canadian, which is so amazing and really gives um, the card a lot of provenance. Um, which is so, so cool. Um, so I'm taking the five of these uh, to the East Coast National on Friday. Nick Mitzi, I'll see you there. Um, I'm going to get that one graded by SGC for my collection. And I'm probably going to grade these PSA uh, in for preparation to sell them. I don't know quite how I'm going to do that yet. Um, but I am just so jazzed about this. Um, this is uh, really one of the scarcest and possibly scarce issue in the 1930s because how could they have possibly made their way back to the States? And um, it's really such an amazing thing that I found it in a shop in New York City. Uh, I mean, I, I would have really paid almost anything for the card, but I think the fact that I thought... It was an R303A, and it turned out to be a V50, V351B. is just insane. Um, and uh, I'm super jazzed about it. I will um, post any updates and uh, any more research that I can find on these um, if I come across them. Um, so tomorrow. Tomorrow is another big day for me. Uh, I've just been having... I just honestly have been on a roll lately. Um... Tomorrow in the mail, I will be getting the 34 Gaudi rookie card that's autographed. I'm going to be going on YouTube Live for that. Um, I have a date tomorrow, so probably after the date. Um, and uh, we're going to experience it together. It's going to be fucking awesome. Um, guys, thank you so much for watching. Again, uh, Michael and Max, you guys rock, and you're such great friends, and I appreciate you both so much. So thank you so much for helping me with all this research while I was working yesterday. You guys are amazing. And um, 
When you see this guy again, it's going to be an SGC slab. Oh, one thing I wanted to mention um, before I end the video. Um, this card, this individual Greenberg, has never been graded by PSA or SGC. Any of these four cards have never been graded by SGC or PSA. So when I grade them, they will be the first of each kind to be graded by a third-party grader. Um, PSA has graded six of these cards before, um, but none of these players. Uh, so it's really quite uh, uh, an interesting find. And um, I can't wait to see what this looks like in SGC holder. It's going to be so sexy. Uh, guys, thank you so much for watching again. Um, and... Uh, I'll see you guys tomorrow. Peace.